I'm Balika Lee Whitney and here uh, representing the African Film Festival in partnership with BAM Dance Africa, a series that the organization looks forward to being a part of each and every year. And it is my pleasure to have as our guest today, producer, director, actor, musician, ambassador at large of AT, Jimmy Jean-Louis. Hello. Hello, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks oh, for having me. The pleasure is all mine. The occasion happens to be the fact that the film Tucson is being shown as part of BAM's Dance Africa series. So first and foremost, I'd like to ask you um, to prepare the role to portray such a dynamic historical figure certainly takes a lot of work, strength, and determination. How do you feel you connected as a performing artist in that role? Uh, I must say that it was, uh, it was a huge task when uh, I was given the opportunity to portray Tristan Louverture. And uh, as an actor, I knew that by portraying him, uh, for the for the for the movie in the movie, it could potentially be the image that will be circulating around the world, representing our great leader, with my face on it. So that definitely added some extra pressure, knowing that I am from Haiti, knowing that I understand the history of the Haitian Revolution very well, and knowing that I also understand the heroes who led that revolution, you know? So it was a lot of, uh, it was a huge responsibility, but at the end of the day, as an actor, you just have to go ahead and, and do the job, you know, that, that required a little bit of preparation, a lot of reading, a lot of uh, uh, documentaries, you know, for research, and uh, also some physical uh, preparation, knowing how to ride a horse, knowing how to, how to fight with a sword and uh, all the other things. So, so yes, it, it was a real challenge for me. How would you define the difference uh, between portrayal um, and so that it doesn't show up as imitation, but more genuine essence of the character that you are portraying? Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the good thing is people don't really have any other images of, uh, of Toussaint Louverture himself. So, in that sense, I couldn't really imitate uh, that that uh, the character or that 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 person. But at the same time, given the historical context, you know, you still had to act in in a way that give him all the extra layers that he deserved as being one of the greatest generals and hero in our time. So. You know, it's like, how do you do that? How do you go by just so you can give a, a performance that will remain um, memorable for, you know, hopefully for life? So often um, valiant heroes and those who have really made an important mark in history, um, that information about them is often left out. And there are a lot of countries, uh, colonialists who have benefited from Haiti in so many ways, but yet deny um, the rich culture that the country offers. Could you speak to that? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's nothing new, you know, to erase the, the history of the black man in, in, in our society. Uh, so, you know, whether you are a black person from the Caribbean, from, from America, from South America, uh, there is a history of trying to cut old ties to the motherland, to the African continent. So, so yes, I mean, I feel, um, I don't think that's right. I think um, history has to be what it is. We have to be able to tell the right, the right, uh, the real uh, history and highlight the people who made the history properly. So in that sense, yes, I really think that uh, um, Toussaint Louverture and uh, the Haitian heroes or most of the black heroes are not being uh, uh, recorded in a way that uh, that they deserve, you know. I mean, we can even go all the way back to to ancient Egypt, you know, where maybe most of the pharaohs probably are from places like Sudan, 
but you know that's part of history you know we don't really know about them you know we don't know that we have some of the greatest people you know in the greatest uh, civilization you know the brightest ideas came from from the motherland so and there certainly you know, are others um from haiti including uh Desilene, uh bookman and can you just add to that because some folks have a singular vision of all that's available for them to learn about and it's good to hear the names of others who were equally valiant and had a, a, a major role in the defense of Haiti and becoming the first, yeah. first, and say what that first is. <laughs> first, well, first and real successful black uh, uh, slave rebellion, you know, and uh, so Haiti having, being the first black republic to fight and win that, uh, that, that fight and that war and that independence, you know, speaks loud. You know, when you're in Haiti, you know that uh, the heroes are not just uh, Toussaint Louverture. We know it's Louverture, Pétion, Dessalines, and Christophe. You know, those are the four main ones. But at the same time, we do have the likes of Bookman, you know, who is, who is extremely important, uh, and all the, all the Maroons, you know. And, uh, and also, of course, the spiritual aspect of the fight is not to be neglected. So we have that famous uh, reunion at Bois Caiman, which was a spiritual and cultural meeting that led the, the, that, 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 huge, uh, that huge fight at Berthier. So, you know, it's not just to send Berthier, but unfortunately, that's the only person up until now that we've been able to, to, to highlight a bit more than the others, but uh, every single one of them deserves some kind of recognition for sure. Curious, uh, in preparation for the role, were there ever opportunities or times when the context of, what, of the way in which the film was being made that you needed to add your voice beyond portraying as an actor? Because, you know, directors obviously don't necessarily always have firsthand information um, in the way that you might. Um, what, what the, was your voice of things that you know that even is not written in history books? Uh, be a great advantage in the making of the film to song? Well, uh, I must say the movie that was well prepared by people that were extremely capable. You know, the two main producers are from Martinique. So they, they, they've researched uh, uh, to celebrate you really well. The, the writer, actually it was more than one writer who wrote the story, were, you know, had several meetings with historians. So, you know, as an actor, you know, I could add uh, uh, what I could, being Haitian and giving all these extra details that are very, very, uh, that are real attributes to Haitians. Uh, but, you know, when you come on board such a project, uh, I must say that, yes, the movie was being financed by, by the French government, by the French people. So, you know, often we have that debate that, you know, there is a French angle uh, to, towards this particular movie, uh, which which I don't necessarily think, just because the producers were from Martinique, <laughs> you know, they, they they really fought, you know, to to get that movie done, and and we really we really did uh, what we could with uh, with all the tools that we had, you know, it, it, you know, as as far as America is concerned, you know, it would have been probably better to have like an English version of the movie just so we, we can spread the word, you know, all over the States. But, you know, that's that's the downside about Toussaint Louverture, you know, it's the fact that it's it's French speaking and 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 it's very difficult to, to access to the American audience with a foreign language. A um, film of this magnitude would certainly be beneficial um, to younger people in schools. And I'm just wondering, you're having grown up, obviously being born and grown up in Haiti, um, was the history of those that you've mentioned in addition to Louverture uh, talked about and, and promoted so that young people would grow up embracing and understanding the importance of their place in time and history? Yes, yes. When I grew up in Haiti, we knew all about the, the history of Haiti, you know, what was Haiti before it became a French uh, colony, uh, you know, about the, the, the native... Uh, Haitians, you know, I think most of them were Awakas and, uh, you know, 
so 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 yes definitely we we we, we had a full uh, we had full history lessons of, uh, of of who we are and and not just Haiti but the entire of the Caribbean South America and Africa so but that is coming from Haiti uh, here unfortunately uh, I'm not sure that the work is done um, the way it should because uh, you know often we don't have that kind of education when you go to the American schools, you know, the education about, uh, you know, other parts of, of America beside America. Uh, in this case, uh, the Caribbean, Haiti, the historical aspect, aspect of Haiti, how Haiti played a huge role in the purchase of Louisiana, for example. I'm not sure that is uh, taught enough at school um, because uh, as you know, you know, without Haiti, maybe Louisiana might still be of French territory up until now, so so I think that the, the Haitian history is uh, is completely uh, in uh, in in direct relationship with the American history. So I think that uh, schools, universities should definitely make uh, uh, a greater effort to 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 teach about uh, about the history of Haiti. In your estimation, given some of the things that are happening globally here in the United States and elsewhere, of course, there are a lot of revolutions rising up, if you will, among certain social justice groups. In particular, um, I'm also called to mind to mention the Palestinian cause. Um, certainly, uh, a valiant fighter such as Toussaint would definitely inspire the movements that we're having here today in the world, would you say? I would I would think so. I mean, yeah, we have to remember that uh, that Toussaint was someone who fought for for equal rights, equal you know, just so we were all the same. He wasn't trying to to have a superior race. Uh, he was yes, first of all, defending his, himself in his race, but really, it was a fight for equality. So so yes, I think he would defend uh, what in just whatever kind of injustice that's happening in the world, whether it's directly in Haiti, in Africa, in, in Israel, Palestine, or, or Yugoslavia, or Rwanda. So yes, he would have done that, I would yeah. think. You, you have a very extraordinary cinematic career uh, in film and television, uh, doing series, and, and also performing with another a number of uh, marquee directors and actors. And I'm wondering, um, in that case, are you finding the, how shall I say, fertile ground? Things are beginning to open up a little. We all know that uh, creative arts has been paused as a result of the pandemic. And how available are some of the roles that you would ordinarily uh, seek, you know, with your capabilities? Yeah, slowly things are opening up. And, 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 and particularly for me, because even though I am based in, uh, in Los Angeles, I do some work in America, but I also do a lot of work outside of America, whether it's in, in Africa, in, in places like Nigeria, Ghana, Ivory Coast, even Egypt, and also in Europe. So, so, so for me, it's very important to have that freedom to, to travel. And, and we don't have that freedom yet, not completely. Some places have opened up, but, but not entirely. So, you know, we're still restricted, but as far as America is concerned, uh, things are moving are moving up, you know. Um, Los Angeles has uh, has been shooting a lot. Atlanta, uh, New Orleans. So slowly we we're getting to to a level uh, that is close to to what we had before before the pandemic. And I would imagine um, the fact that you're a multilinguist uh, also helps in make you making you a appealing call to uh, actor to uh, participate in films. And what about for you directing, producing? Is that uh, on your agenda? Well, I've, 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 I've produced a, a few projects, but you know, I feel very comfy uh, doing what I do, you know, be, me, being, being, being an actor, to be honest with you. And, uh, and because I do speak a few languages, so it allows me to, to, to work in, in different markets. You know? And uh, I'm very interested in, in what's happening in Africa. Because I think, uh, because of uh, of the the new technology, because of the fact that uh, pretty much every single African has a phone or or a 
a device where they can watch contents, then Africa becomes a very valuable place. You know, when you have a continent with 1.3 billion people having the tools and uh, being able to access contents, then slowly people are starting to pay attention because all that billion point three people can turn into into money. Absolutely. Um, considering the fact that they're increasingly being made more and more uh, films that kind of represent sagas, um, more deeply rooted explorations of historical figures, um, do you see the possibility of another angle, a different angle of a film like Toussaint being shown in the way that you mentioned earlier? you know, for wider audiences? Yeah, I think you, we can have many other movies about the Haitian Revolution. When we, when we think about projects such as Alexander the Great, I don't know how many Alexander the Great we've had so far. You know, I don't know how many movies about Napoleon Bonaparte we've had so far. We have many movies about those kind of people. So yes, we could potentially have a, a English speaking version of, uh, whether it's Toussaint Louverture, whether it's uh, Dessalines or some of the other heroes. I know that uh, our great friend Danny Glover has been trying for many, many, many years, you know, to produce his own version of Toussaint Louverture. He's not been successful, you know, yet, you know, I don't know if he's still working on it, but, uh, but that, would be a, that would be a good, um, a good project to, to, to push further along. And you know? hopefully one day we will we'll have uh, his version of Toussaint Louverture. I would love to see that because I know that he's uh, someone who is extremely invested in the in the black cars. Very much so. Interesting in my notes, which I haven't peeked at. I'm doing this uh, pretty much off the top. Um, that Danny Glover is 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 very respected and well known for his advocacy and support uh, in that way. So let's just hope that time will bring the great reveal. Um, yeah. I don't want to uh, skip over, you know, all the complimentary things that have recognized you for your work, um, awards um, at a variety of festivals, uh, in particular, uh, for one film that I really, really enjoy, Rattlesnakes, um, and there's, there's some other that sort of marks you as a romantic, if you will. Uh, maybe there were some other character assessments uh, given to that, but I wanna see you um, also, as a superhero, you know, uh, have you thought about that? You know, because increasingly, uh, particularly in the realm of uh, comic fair, comic book fair, um, that's happening all over. So has that ever crossed your mind? Have you gone up for any calling for such a uh, possibility of well, a superhero? I mean, yeah, on TV, I, I, I was on Heroes. Uh, which was one of the most famous uh, superheroes TV, well, about, you know, TV show at the time, which was back in 2006. So, so the idea of being a, being a superhero has always been in my mind. Uh, being part of a Marvel show, yeah, I think uh, it's, it's something that, that I, would, I, would love, I would love to do. And I believe that there are a few characters that might be available, uh, you know, in... Uh, in that world of, um, of of superhero, there's a voodoo voodoo character that uh, that could be quite appealing. So you know, we'll see what happens. You know. So. Well, I think we've put it out in the ethos because um, the audiences that, that take to um, that kind of uh, a visual fair is very 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 large, and. Yeah. Um, and it's not just young people, it's intergenerational, you know, there are people who follow um, that type of entertainment um, down to the point or up to the point of cosplay, you know, dressing up yeah. those characters. And I think um, I'm always having young people in mind, they really need to see themselves as the ones who uh, take care of whatever needs to be done, you know, through their powers. And since you mentioned Bundung, um, it's interesting that the uh, theme of Dance Africa's uh, uh, festival this year has everything to do with celebrating those aspects of that particular tradition. Something that people fear or draw certain conclusions about which are not always well-founded. I mean, every culture has some kind of way of embracing whatever their belief systems may be. Why do you think there's such fear and misconceptions about 
the practices of Haiti? Well, I guess it's uh, when we speak about uh, voodoo, voodoo, uh, we go back to spirituality, to to the some of the first beliefs that that that, that we know and we had uh, when we were all in Africa, and that's that's way before the arrival of the new religions, uh, Christianity, you know, Islam, and uh, and all the other ones. So I think there's been a very strong effort to erase. Uh, everything that's connecting us to to that kind of uh, spiritual and and uh, and cultural uh, connection with with ourselves uh, with the continent of Africa, and and I think that's part of uh, that's part of the work, you know, to to sort of uh, speak badly about uh, what we believe in, just so they can force us to 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 control our minds and force us to believe in what they believe in as a tool to control us. And that has been working for the past 400 years. And uh, unfortunately, I must say that it's still working. Unfortunately, yes. Also, um, you're being a thespian. There are other ways in which we get to appreciate Haitian work through their art, through music, through dance. Um, there are authors like Edwidge Danticat, um, I'm sure you are well familiar with Raoul Peck and his current uh, work, Exterminate All the Brutes. Have you seen any aspect of that? Uh, I haven't seen Exterminate of All the Brutes yet. You know, I know Raoul, you know, we spoke about it before he even did it. And I did a movie with Raoul in Haiti as well. Um, but Raoul is one of those great directors who's coming up with... Uh, with uh, with a level of uh, of work, not just, I mean, obviously he's not there to entertain people. He is actually there to educate people, you know, and he's doing a great job at that. And and he's reminding people of what history has been and and and, and where we at, you know, it's he's forcing us to to check on ourselves. And um, and I think it's very brave from him and he's doing it in a way that is extremely appealing. And uh, and yeah, so. I haven't seen his latest uh, project yet, Exterminate All the Brutes, but uh, from the teasers and the trailer that I saw, you know, I, I just can't wait to see it. You know, I will, I will see it soon for sure. Of course. Um, multi hyphening, I would say that you are, since you're an actor, producer, and director. I read somewhere that you also played Jim Bay. Uh, on a <laughs> recording with Seal. Um, are your interests in music continuing in any way? I know that uh, was a while ago. <laughs> I, I don't want to say that that was a fluke, but... <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes flukes you know, work. I, I've, I've always played, I've always played djembe for fun. Uh, and uh, and at some point I had that opportunity to, to record that song with, with Seal, you know, which was wonderful. Uh, but no, I don't think that I have any real intention to pursue that route. I'm going to stay on my lane, uh, which is <laughs> more, more on the acting and, and potentially uh, producing and, and, and maybe directing a little bit more as well. But, but yeah, uh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, to leave uh, the music to the, to the real musicians. <laughs> okay. Um, just wondering if happening where you are, or perhaps on occasional visit to Haiti, that you're sharing your dramatic skills with other young people who might be interested in pursuing uh, work in theater. Are you teaching the craft? Uh, I, I, well, I don't really teach, but you know, from or lecturing, I have, like, master classes, you know, I have meetings with uh, with uh, with young students, you know, I go to to colleges, I go to schools, art schools, and and you know, I share my experience. And if that if that helps, then great. But uh, but I don't consider myself uh, a teacher per se. Uh, but but I do hope that maybe some of my my experience and the way I share them with uh, with the youngsters might might help them, might help motivating them and inspiring them. To, to keep pursuing this, uh, this business, which is uh, extremely difficult because, you know, 
one has to understand that it's not an easy business to, to succeed in. Uh, just to give you a number, I believe it's only 2%, 2% of the actors in LA that are capable and able to live out of acting. So it's a very, very, very low percentage. But then again, it's, it, it's, it's, it's still very possible. And I wanted to also ask you, um, returning to the film, Tucson, to talk briefly, if you will, about your mindset. Um, did you have to extract yourself away from certain things in order to fully embrace the task of the portrayal? Um, did you have to go into a cabin somewhere, you know, to uh, solidify the learning of the lines? Um, and did you bring that character home? Um, well, it, it was, oh, are you oh. still there? Well, uh, it says it's still recording and I have okay. no idea. Except I'm not seeing you. Oh, here you are. Okay. Okay. Here I am. Sorry. So hopefully, I think the entire question got through. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, first of all, I had a I had a few months uh, to prepare. So the months of preparation led me to really get in the skin of uh, of that character, and uh, and when you are fully invested in a new character you find your own ways to get into it and sometimes to get out of it a little bit, not completely, because while shooting, it's all, you know, for me, I think it's better to try to stay in character as much as possible, you know, for the duration of, uh, of the shoot. And, um, and then you get out of it once you're done. But to send over to was one that was very difficult, you know, in, in so many ways, you know, I mean, just even even the, the the lines themselves were difficult because you know I was dealing with dates, name, names of cities and stuff like that. That you know it's very difficult to memorize those kind of things. And and then I had the, the, the all the costume that was very heavy with the wigs and the makeup and and then having to to ride horses and all kind of things that made it a very complicated uh, uh, shoot for me all around. The joy was the fact that I was shooting to Saint Ouverture, so I didn't mind, you know, uh, all the, the the level of difficulties that that I, that I went through. Uh, did I did I bring that character back home? I think to some level, yeah. To some level, yeah. I think it stayed with me for a little bit because when you play someone like that for, I think it was for about three months, and you're dealing with a part of history that was so important and so positive as well as a Haitian, it stays with you, especially when in modern time, you're dealing with a different face of Haiti, a different, a, a different situation in the country. So it forced me to ask questions it's like, why? Is the situation so bad in Haiti right now when all those great leaders fought so hard for that independence? And, and yeah, it, well, there was, you know, I, I had some conflicted kind of uh, uh, thought and, uh, thoughts and, uh, and feelings about, you know, the situation the actual situation of Haiti and, and what I was doing, you know, the shooting that great leader who, who, who liberated uh, the Haitians, you know, and, and the main question that always came in my mind is, you know, what would, he, what would he say if he was able to come back to life now and look at the state of the country? So, you know, me as a person, I'm also asking myself, you know, what can I do? You know, uh, so yeah, it's uh, yeah, it can it, 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 it's it's not it's not easy. The more you think about it, the more you realize the, the layers of of uh, of uh, 
of complication that uh, that you know that that an actor can sometimes go through when when it's time to portray someone that is that meaningful you know well you've definitely expressed you know all the things that are inevitable to happen you know tapping into your not tapping but uh, feeling the expression of your own emotions and your own life it's just uh, very obvious and the takeaway for you I think is also expressed there in terms of you know looking at life in a different way, you know, and seeing yourself to some degree responsible for whatever it is that you can possibly change, even if it's just a little bit, you know, to, to make a difference. I think that's the responsibility of any human being, you know, to yeah. make life tomorrow better where possible, much yeah. better than yesterday. <laughs> Absolutely. Completely, completely. Um, where, where was the film shot, actually? Uh, it was shot in... Uh in France and in Martinique. We, we didn't go to Haiti to shoot it, unfortunately, because the, the actual situation of the country would not permit uh, such a production to, to shoot in the country. So, you know, that was unfortunate, but... Well, I could ask an obvious question, kind of being some aware of what the answer might be. What's the why of that? Why would it not be able to uh, well no, number one thing uh the when you shoot when you shoot a movie when you when you are in a production you have to ensure that that production uh so you're gonna have to have an entrance that will ensure you and and unfortunately right now most production will not ensure most insurance will not ensure production that shoots in a place like haiti mm -hmm. or you know in the same you know could be in a place like palestine you know any place that has some kind of conflicts will be a red zone for, for insurances. So that's the number one big, uh, big answer. But if you really want to shoot in the country, you can find ways. Don't get me wrong. You know, you can find ways. Uh, Raul Peck shot in Haiti a couple of times. So it is possible. But, you know, it can, it can represent a risk for some people. As we close, is there anything that I haven't um, asked or uh, brought up topically that you wish to share? Uh, no, I think we spoke about uh, pretty much everything, you know, and because, uh, yeah, we, you know, I'm, I'm here just to answer, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can I, speak I about many things, but, you know, uh, I yes. think at the same time, within the short period of time, we we were able to, to cover quite quite some ground. Okay. Um, or maybe I should just mention that, yes, the, in, in, in December of last year, I did win Best Actor of, uh, of the Continent of Africa with the movie Derance. Yes, you know? yes, yes, yes. Which, yeah, which, which for me- it's, My notes, yes. It is yeah, for me, it's, it, 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 it speaks loud. It means a lot because, you know, that means, you know, uh, being considered as you know as the top actor of a continent that has 1.3 billion people you know there should be some weight on that uh, but as you know we, we're dealing with a society that doesn't really uh, care much about what happens in Africa so that's why you know it's always important for me to always make a note and, and, and mention it just so we can start getting used to to embracing uh, the good things that come from from the continent Yes, yeah, so that is here. Um, of course, um, awards and nominations for Rattlesnake, uh, the Pan African Film Festival has recognized you, Monte Carlo Film Festival, Best Actor for Code Switch, you know, the, the Ghana, Ghana, movie, uh, the Ghana Movie Awards, uh, yeah. and International Film Festival in Cannes, um, so many more. And of course, the African American um, uh, Film Festival. Well, I think, uh, as you said, we talked about much and um it's always enjoyable to see you um, it's a pleasure to <laughs> we'll, uh, bring you to uh new york sometime soon and i would really um uh, especially look forward to seeing something with the banner heading of your name with the assignments of having been either producer director actor you know um what whatever is in the cards you know i'm yes. sure the, the stars will align and um you know, we'll see you in uh, 
more roles as as doctor as you appeared on television and um also uh, able to just flex you know because um you got the goods what can i tell you, you got the goods um, this you. conversation has been most enjoyable with jimmy john louise uh he's an incredible performing artist a good spirited person knowledgeable and all those things so let the stars be aligned and i thank you so much for your time and again uh, this conversation is very much connected to uh, the Brooklyn Academy of Music and the partnership with the African Film Festival. Uh, the film Toussaint will be enjoyed. It has, it has no such thing as shelf life. It's a film that's worthy and worthwhile seeing as often as possible because there are a lot of lessons there. So thank you. And we look forward to, for more. Let me say that again. They can edit this out. We look forward to seeing you uh, gracing our stages real soon. And hopefully the live stage, I haven't asked you about that. Like, Broadway, just any, 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 just, just any thoughts on um, something coming your way from that because it's getting ready to open. Yeah, you know, it, it's funny that you say so because uh, I was just offered a part of, of, you know, to play, well, in a play uh, that I thought was was really really well done, and and I'm still thinking about doing it. Um, it's uh, it's by a young young Haitian playwright called Franz Luce Benson, who is extremely talented. So you know she has a play that I'm very in interested in, and there's a possibility that uh, that we work together on that. But uh, but we see we'll see what what happens with that. Well, and uh, and I'd like to take the opportunity to once again thank the African Film Festival. For always inviting me, even uh, in times of uh, pandemic, you know, we're still able to connect virtually. So once again, thank you for that, and and I hope people will uh, will enjoy the movie to some regard too. Thank you. My blessings. Yes. Bye bye. Au revoir. <laughs> Au revoir. <laughs>